Hi, this is Juan Lopez, Digital Media Director with Jag Insurance Group. And today we're launching our new segment, The Creative Coalition, where we talk with creatives within different industries, find out how they got to where they are today, and get a little bit into their creative process. And today, my first guest is someone that we've collaborated with quite a bit recently. Uh, quite a bit recently. And um, someone that I've had the pleasure of working with. And uh, I hope to work with a lot more in the future. And that's Roman Garcia from Nerd Support. He Hello. is their digital media designer. Roman, how are you today? Doing good. Um, glad I could be able to talk to you. I know that Scott and Lewis kind of get like the highlight now uh, <laughs> most of the time. But yeah. you know, now and again, we got to uh, give our takes on stuff, I guess. A little, a little pat on the back <laughs> yeah. a little bit every now and then. Um, both you and me have had um, sort of an unorthodox path to where we are right now in digital media and in the social media landscape. And I just want to know, um, did you intend to have a, cre- a creative career or did you have uh, a mind of being in digital media or is that something that you kind of fell into? Yeah, in terms of di- digital media, like definitely. Like I, gr- uh, I basically, I, I don't know if I'd say grew up, but mm-hmm. like I was using Photoshop since like uh, like the start of high school pretty much <laughs> and like uh, Adobe Premiere, stuff like that. Um, and then... But but like I knew I wanted to do something with computers and kind of like that kind of uh, design stuff, but I didn't know what exactly. I actually that my major is actually for uh, well it's digital media. I went to UCF, but mm-hmm. um, that uh, the major was for um, game design actually. Oh, nice. So uh, through that, I was able to learn a lot of the design processes like w- with the Adobe. Uh, sweet and and uh, a little bit of social media as well that I was in a couple clubs um, as well as like some coding so like yeah. I'm, I'm pretty spread out in terms of like what I've learned but uh, yeah it, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you, you that's pretty interesting so you went to UCF and you went to the gaming uh, department yeah. I'm guessing you met a lot of other like creatives there so that kind of gave you like a yeah. blueprint on how to work with other creators. Do you have a you have a favorite video game or a series of video games? Oh, Super Smash Brothers is yeah. probably like my of choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you pretty good? Do you have a character that you like? I'd say I'm pretty good. Yeah. You have a prefer you have a main main character you play with? Bowser. Bowser? <laughs> yeah. mm, all right. All right. <laughs> Uh, surprisingly enough, I love fighting games. I'm not a Super Smash guy, maybe because I never own like a Nintendo mm-hmm. console. But that's a conversation for another day. So uh, tell me, like, when you got to Nerd Support, what was your first position there? So uh, I actually uh, was interviewed for just like simple graphic designer mm-hmm. that we were doing some new stuff to our website, and um, and they had a marketing manager there uh, that interviewed me at the time. And uh, so I was just like making icons when we were doing blogs. I was making the thumbnails or graphics for that. Um, but then I kind of turned into something else that uh, they that marketing manager moved on. Mm-hmm. I had to take over that. We had a copywriter, which was kind of like my partner for I almost want to say like a year and a half, mm-hmm. uh, like by the time that COVID hit. And then uh, early last year, um, they mo- they moved on as well okay. uh, to, to the, they got like a writing position for like a book or a publishing agency or something and so I, t- I took over that as well mm-hmm. uh, as as well as the social media so yeah. and that's kind of where I am now so you're you're a jack of all trades no real yeah yeah <laughs> that's kind of like me I feel like you within our industry which when you think about it social media takes a lot from different other industries. Copywriting has existed for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Um, Editing has lasted, been around a very long time. Camera work, all that type of stuff. But in social media, you really need to know a little bit of all this type of stuff. And it's actually still a very young industry. Mm -hmm. So it's, the floor is always shifting under our feet. So I feel like that adaptability is very important. And uh, that we're actually kind of at an advantage versus someone who is like, no, like all I do is copywriting and this is what I do, Mm -hmm. or all I do is graphic design and this is what I do. I think you need to um, really like be flexible and versatile. Mm -hmm. Because if not, I mean, I always say my go-to joke, which is a terrifying joke is, uh, my job can change overnight because the algorithm can change Right. right overnight. That uh, I don't know if you have seen this post that it was uh, it was kind of going around uh, mm-hmm. recently that uh, I saw it from like Dan Price's feed mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. that um, 
uh, that it was like social media in, in 2014 is like, oh, uh, you have to post at this time yeah. with this many hashtags, this many characters, yeah. uh, th- with like this specific theme or whatever. Yeah. And you'll get this amount of likes or whatever. And then like social media now is just like, I don't know. And just <laughs> kinda, kinda, <laughs> you just kind of got to try anything. Yeah, you really have to be open. Um, because if you just think about two years ago, and TikTok just exploding because people yeah. were stuck at home looking for things to do. And now TikTok, uh, I was having this conversation with uh, Johnny Benitez, um, mm-hmm. digital uh, content creator here at JAG. And he and we were talking about how now TikTok is actually shifting. TikTok's evolving at, a, at an even higher clip than Instagram or Facebook or any of these other platforms yeah. because it's already gone past from like, oh, that's a fun dance, that's a funny video to... Oh, there are brands that are specifically using TikTok to get people to know about their product mm-hmm. in an educational capacity. And um, that's both fascinating and frustrating because mm-hmm. you, you really have to learn these platforms on the fly. Right. And tomorrow it might be some other thing. You know, you, who knows? Right. I mean, we do a lot of LinkedIn stuff because that's primary where B2B is. But... You don't know. All of a sudden, tomorrow, Indeed.com might be like, we have a social media section. Yeah. Uh, come do our stuff. And then Indeed starts blowing up. Yeah, like even with the, uh, if you don't mind me jumping in, that it, like yeah. even with uh, LinkedIn, that it was like for the longest time, it was just kind of like strictly business. And then like uh, now that I'm, I'm actually not even sure if it's out. I'm pretty sure that we're uh, like the creative mode yeah. or uh, that it's basically like yes. to allow uh, specifically for like social media content creators and things like that, mm-hmm. um, it's just uh, crazy to see like how that's evolved and yeah. uh, and uh, I would even say that f- uh, like how you guys have utilized social media that and uh, I, I know like your Instagram is huge but do you guys mm-hmm. use TikTok uh, like do you upload the reels on there too Yeah, so we we've been uh, uploading more on TikTok recently, um, and we're really going all in on the on the reels slash TikTok mm-hmm. format, you know, because right. it's just like. Uh, bite-sized content is what the audience wants. Mm -hmm. And you always need to listen to the audience and go where the audience is rather than trying to mold the audience in whatever way you think. Now, uh, marketing, of course, there is a lot of, um, you know, crafting expectations and and setting, um, you know, setting kind of the tone, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if the audience is here on TikTok, then you got to go to TikTok. You can't mm-hmm. just, I can't be uh, selling VHSs <laughs> circa the year 2009 when there's Blu-rays, and I can't be selling Blu-rays now that everyone's going digital. Mm-hmm. So you really have to think about it in that way. And I think sometimes people underestimate um, the velocity at mm-hmm. which technology is evolving. Yeah, the, the, the other issue, I guess, that we have and this is actually something I commend you guys for, mm-hmm. is uh, that uh, TikTok is, is or just like, kind of like those social medias in general, like uh, Instagram reels and things like that, that they're, they're built for so much like uh, creativity and uh, kind of like like entertain, entertainment. Mm-hmm. And for our industries, uh, insurance and IT, it's not ex- like it's really difficult to try and yes. kind of like expand on that mm-hmm. uh, beyond like, for example, that w- we do like cyber s- security skits. Like, you, you know, you can kind of mess with that a little bit, but to try and make it like digestible that I think yeah. what is something that you guys have actually uh, succeeded pretty well in, to be honest. Yeah. And I think that what, what people need to understand is that there's a very different uh, there's a contrast between a company and a brand. There's a Nike company, there's a Nike brand. There's a McDonald's company, there's a McDonald's brand. And at JAG, there's the company and there's the brand. And our brand is very irrelevant, it's very fun, um, it's very casual. And as a company, we take things, your insurance, very seriously. We do, you know, right. it, these are your assets and stuff like that. As a brand, we understand that there has to be some sort of flair and personality. Right. Because if you uh, don't have those things, like why do people, I mean, you know, why did kids go to McDonald's? Was it because they loved the burgers or because they loved Ronald McDonald? 
You got those are those are the things that that, that you have to think about. Sometimes I, I would I would probably argue it's not, it was not Ronald McDonald. <laughs> it was it was probably the toy, it, which yeah. is probably why you don't see Ronald McDonald yeah, anymore. Yeah, so Ron, R.I.P. Ronald. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but you 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 know, and that's why certain athletes are able to transition into you know if you see like a Peyton Manning. His uh, on-field production is one thing. His brand is another. He's able mm-hmm. to host SNL. He's able to do all these type of things. And I think that if people can make that distinction in their head, because I think that that is a barrier for a lot of companies and a lot of entrepreneurs is like, how will people take me seriously? Mm-hmm. You know, How will people want me to do their tax return yeah. if I'm dancing on TikTok? The answer is probably yes. Yeah. Um, be- so, yeah. You, Surprising. <laughs> yeah. Because people, more than anything in an increasingly digital world, want to relate to other people. Mm-hmm. They want to know that there's a human being behind yes. yeah. what's happening, behind their IT, behind their insurance. Right. Um, and, I, and I think that that um, is going to become more and more prevalent as we come further into the decade and further into the years and, and all this digital marketing mm-hmm. continues to evolve. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the, the flip side of it. Like for example, the, uh, like with a lot of like the e-commerce, like, like you were saying, Nike and McDonald's, like they yeah. can be creative yeah. uh, and things like that, but there's not really too much to build like the relationship between you and, and their yeah. product. Yeah. Whereas with us on the flip side, it's difficult to make that kind of like create uh, yeah. creativity and digestible content but it's so beneficial because you're building that relationship with the people you're going to be interacting you, you directly interact with correct yeah yeah i think that people also i mean we're both good examples of like going back to the nike example a mm-hmm. lot of people are like nike's a part of who they are right like mm-hmm. i only wear nike i right. would never wear reebok uh-huh. okay i only drink coke i wouldn't drink pepsi same. So people, so people, you know, it almost becomes like part of their identity. Mm-hmm. Whereas IT and insurance will never reach yeah. that sort of um, level with people. Mm-hmm. Um, that is why people who may be in services, financial services or IT services or stuff like that, you just connect with people on a different level because we're not selling a product. We are selling a service. A service yeah. And... We're selling the personalities behind that service. Mm -hmm. So you are making sure that people trust you guys as an authority in IT. Mm -hmm. We're making sure that people trust us as an authority on insurance. And we're like, here, here's all this valuable information for free. We're not like, uh, this is, we're very transparent. This is what you have to do if you're going to protect your business from a cyber attack. This is what you have to do if you need cyber liability. We're not asking you to buy it from us. But you know that you should because we have built our reputation. And I think that that is the distinction between a product and um, a service. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Roman, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Um, We took a little bit of the spotlight from our bosses, but I don't think they'll mind too much. Of course. (laughs) Um, But thank you so much for coming on. I hope to collaborate with you a little bit more in the future. For sure. Um, Guys, thank you so much for joining us here on this inaugural edition of the Creative Coalition. And we'll see you next time.